Praise Him, praise Him, praise the Lord. Something happened when I call your name. Something happened when I call the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Step out of your way, let me praise the Lord. Step out of my way, let me praise the Lord. I've got the victory. You've got the victory. We've got the victory. I've got the victory. You've got the victory in Jesus. I declare I have the victory. We've got the victory. Hallelujah. We've got the victory. Something happens when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Something happens when I call the name of Jesus. I've got the victory. We've got the victory. We cannot be silent. We cannot now be why silent. Don't everybody just start shouting right where you are. Why don't you just start dancing? Amen. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. I've got the victory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Give him God. the praises. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Bless the Lord. I've got the victory. We've got the victory in Jesus. Jesus has given us the victory. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. We are to lift and praise up his holy name. His name is worthy to be praised from the uprising of the sun to the going down of the very same. Greetings, my brethren, and welcome to our teleconference. God is good to us. We really appreciate the love and mercy of God. Um, was taking us um, all the way from um, all the way forward and backwards from um, uh, Portugal. It was a wonderful little trip. God bless His wonderful name. We thank Him for His goodness and His mercies towards us. I am really rejoicing in the God of our salvation. Hallelujah! Thank God for this day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will appreciate God for all that He has done for us for where he has brought us from and where what he's doing for us now and what he's yet to do. Greater things are in store for us when we call on to the name of Jesus. Before we go further, I'm going to have a short prayer. Then I'm going to ask um, Sister Rose to sing us a song and then I'll move into the word. In the name of Jesus, bless every one of you. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for our spirit life today that we are yet on the land of the living. Hallelujah. Where we can make our wrongs right. We appreciate you, Lord, for your love towards us, your mercy and your grace. We bless your holy name. Pray you bless this teleconference. Pray you lead us and inspire us with your word. Help us to draw nearer to you, mighty God. Oh, the mighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is with us. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence guiding us along the way. Thank you. Have your way, we pray. And we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. 
God bless you, my brethren. I'm going to ask Sister Rose to sing a song before going to the Word. Um, God bless you, Sister Rose. Sing a song for us, please. God bless you. Lord, hold my hand while I run this race. Lord, hold mm. my hand while I run this race. Oh, Lord, hold my hand while I run this race. And I don't want to run this race in vain. Lord, hold my hand while I run this race. Lord, hold my hand while I run this race. And Lord, hold my hands while I run this race. And I don't want to run this race. I don't want to run this race. And I don't want to run this race in vain. Soon and very soon, we Amen. are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. Oh, there'll be no more crying there when we are going to see the King. Amen. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, no more crying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we are going to see the King. Anointing, fall on me, sweet anointing, let me pray, let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointed for me. Hallelujah. Anointed for me. Sweet anointing. Set me free. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing, fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on Hallelujah. me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Rose. Thank you for singing that wonderful song. God bless you. May you continue to sing for the Lord and lift up his holy name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessings, my brethren. And we are going to move on to the scriptures today. And my topic today is the beauty of the Lord. The beauty of the Lord. We don't really sometimes think and realize how beautiful our God is, how wonderful He is. The songwriter says, He is the fairest of 10,000. He is the fairest of 10,000 to our soul. This is our God. So I'm going to start with Psalm, Psalm 96. And it goes like this, Psalm 96. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 9. It says, Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. 
his wonders among all the people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord, he made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindred of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So we're talking about the beauty of the Lord. And sometimes we see things and we say, how beautiful is this object? How beautiful is this sight, this scenery? How beautiful? You know, you'd be, uh, 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 according to what we see and observe, to our eyes is beautiful. But nothing, nothing, nothing on this earth, on this planet, can compare to the beauty of the Lord. And we want to talk about the beauty of the Lord. How beautiful how majestic and how the beauty of the Lord is composed in how many forms and ways. So the psalmist says, sing unto the Lord a new song, sing unto the Lord all the earth, sing unto the Lord and bless his name. So for us to comprehend the beauty of the Lord, we have to give God the praise and the glory. And when we can praise him and glorify him, and lift him up and exalt his name and bless him, then the glory and the beauty of the Lord reflect unto us. So sing unto the Lord a new song. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. So we'll talk about how beautiful the Lord is. And David caught a vision of the beauty of the Lord in Psalms Psalm 27 and from verse 1 to verse 4 David says the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even my enemies and my foes come up come up on me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell Though an horse should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of hallelujah to behold the beauty of the lord and to inquire in his temple so the psalmist could see and realize that there's nothing beyond and nothing to compare with salvation and the beauty of the lord he says the lord is my light what would we be without light naturally or spiritually where, where would we be without light but the psalmist says the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear when we have light we can see clearly and when we have salvation we have hope the hope of salvation the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, whom shall I be afraid? So the mere comfort that we have realizing who God is and what God is to us, that is our strength. And that is, our, that is where we see the beauty of the Lord because we are comforted. We are comforted by the Lord. 
He went on to say, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Because the word of God and the love of God and the beauty of God has compassed us about that no matter how the wicked rise up against the righteous, they will not prevail. They will stumble, they will fall. They come upon us to destroy, to eat up our flesh, as, as the psalmist says. They stumble and fail. He went on to say, though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. So, because of the beauty and the love of God, which is wrapped up in His grace and His mercy and His love towards us, we have such a comfort. We have such a comfort against all foes. Though a host encamp against me, you can think about an army, an army who would camp against us as a child of God because we know the power of God. He says, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. I will be confident in my God. I will be confident in my God who is able to deliver. And when we think about David, the confidence that he had when the Philistine Goliath came up on the children of Israel, his confidence was in God. He, the war rose up. The giant rose up against him. But he said, I have confidence in my God because I know the beauty of God is wrapped up in, in me and my confidence is in him. And in his beauty, there is power. And so he was not afraid to take on the giant Goliath because he had the confidence in his God. And when war rose up against him, against him, or even when war rise up against us, we are confident in our God able, to, who is able to deliver. So he says, because of this, he says, one thing have I desire, that will I seek after. Among, among, among all things that we need in this life, Above, above all things, this is what the psalmist says, one thing of I desire, above all things, I desire, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Just imagine, about, above all things that one could we, we, we desire in this world, Many would desire riches and many would desire fame and fortune and whatever. But David says, one thing have I desired and that one thing will I seek after. And that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, the, psalm, the writer says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. If we have the joy of God, we have beauty. If we have the joy of the Lord, we have his beauty. He says, that I, one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, every day of my life. I want to be in the presence of the Lord. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. To behold the beauty of the Lord. I want to see the Lord in his beauty, in his majesty, in the power of his glory, in the power of his grace, in the power of his peace that he promised his people, my peace I will leave to you, I give unto you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, I give unto you. And the beauty of the Lord is the peace that passeth all understanding. 
David says, to behold the beauty of the Lord. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. It is to say you have 10,000 people, 10,000 looking at 10,000 and the Lord, the beauty of the Lord outshine 10,000. He is the fairest of 10,000. He will stand out. His beauty will stand out among 10,000. So, the beauty of the Lord, one thing of I desire, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord. We, we see things in this world and we think they're beautiful, but they're nothing to compare with the beauty of the Lord. We even, we cannot comprehend the beauty of our Lord. He is so beautiful. Bless his holy name. In Psalm, in Psalm 29, if I just read Psalm 29, it says, Give unto the Lord, O he mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We, there's a lot of things about God that we cannot comprehend in this life. We cannot comprehend the power of Almighty God. We cannot comprehend it. Because our, our physical attribute cannot comprehend the spiritual power of God, the strength of the Almighty God, the awesomeness of God. Our physical body and mind cannot comprehend it. But if we look through the spiritual eye, we will see the glory of God. We will, we, will, we will have a glimpse of the glory of God. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Give him the praise. Sometimes I think we don't praise the Lord enough. We don't glorify him enough. We don't lift him up enough. We don't give him all the praise and the glory that is due unto him. We say we should thank him in all things. We should give him thanks. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunder it. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord created the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunder it. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. And the beauty of his power. There is beauty in power. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. We think of this earth and we think of this world and we think of, you know, uh, you know the, the the royalties and the, you know how they are arrayed in all the gold, fine gold and fine apparel. And we think of that and we say, "Oh, beautiful that looks." Nothing to compare with the majesty of our Lord Jesus. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaketh the cedar of Lebanon. He maketh them to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syria like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord, the word of God is powerful. And he commanded and it stood still. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness, the wilderness of Kadesh. This is Psalm, this is Psalm 29 and verse, um, verse 8. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hand to calf and discover the forest. And in his temple do everyone. In his temple, in his house, in his presence, 
In his presence does everyone speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. The Lord sitteth king forever. What a God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. Hallelujah. Give glory to God. Give praises unto him. In Psalm 113, I read here, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye, O servant of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, from the rise of the sun to the going down of the same. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. His name is to be praised. And you know, if we want to have a glimpse of the glory of God, we need to praise Him in the morning from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We need to praise Him when we wake up in the morning. We need to give Him thanks because when we think about it, so many people are unable to move. Some people are bed bound and they can't help themselves and so many are in so many conditions. But we are able to rise and walk around and move around and you know, so we are to give God glory. Bless His name. Worship Him in the beauty of holiness. When the praises go up, the blessing come down. And sometimes we, if we, we, we don't praise God enough. The Lord, um, Psalm 113 verse 4 says, The name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above the heavens. The Lord is high above all nations. Imagine how many nations there are on the earth. Imagine the amount of people, maybe 7 point something billion people. But the Lord is high above all nations. The Lord is in control of all situation upon the earth because He's Lord, He's commander, He's ruler of all the earth. The Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above the heavens. The glory of the Lord is above the heavens. The glory of God is above the heavens. The glory of God is above the heavens. The above the heavens. Praise His name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We give you praise, Lord, because your glory is as above the heavens. First 5 says, who's, on, who's like unto the Lord who dwelleth in I, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in the heaven and on the earth? So even though God is so mighty, he created heavens, he created the heaven and he created the earth. Yet the Bible says he humbled himself. He humbled himself. He became as man. He became as his creation. And he became, he, he humbled himself to be born as a, as a baby in a very lowly place in a manger where animals are kept. He humbled himself, the almighty God. How oh, great is the God of our salvation. How great is the God. He is greatly to be praised. He is greatly to be exalted. Who humbleth himself behold the things that are in the earth. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the downhill. That he may set them with princes, even the princes of of his people. God is a loving God. When we humble ourselves before him, and we think about the um, Joseph, how, jo how God exalted Joseph, one of the son of Jacob. He was the, um, uh, the dreamer, they call him the dreamer, and we see what his brother did. The brother, his brother was jealous of him, and they wanted to slew him. Because he said that he had a dream that they would all be bowing down before him and they wanted to kill him and they at one point they chuck him they throw him into a pit out of into a lowly place. He threw they threw him. But God had a plan. God had a plan for him. And we see that God eventually 
lift up Joseph from the pit to the palace. Hallelujah. To be second in command of Egypt. God loveth the poor. God raises up the poor. What a God. Out of the dust. And lifted up the needy out of the downhill. That is beautiful. That is wonderful. That he may set them with princes. Even the princes of his people. So God lift up Joseph from the pit to the palace. And he can do the same for us. And in many ways he has done the same for us. We, just for us to realize where we could have been. One songwriter says, draw back the curtains of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. How blessed are we? Where we could have been. It's just because of the love and the mercy and the grace of God why we are standing today. Just because of his grace and of his mercy why we are standing today. He is merciful, he is loving, and he is kind. Praise his name. He is to be praised. He is to be praised. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the needy out of the downhill, that he may set them with princes, even the princes of his people. Our God is good. He is greatly to be greatly to be praised. And, and we read on to Psalm 47. 1 to 7. 47. Psalm 47 says, Oh clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Sing unto the Lord with the voice of victory. Say thank you, Lord. Don't, you don't have to wait until the battle is over. We can shout now because he has already given us the victory. Shout now. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. We are triumphant. For the Lord Most High is terrible. And he's a great king over all the earth. The Lord Most High is terrible, terribly, terrible. And he's a king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nation under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellent of Jacob, whom he love. God love Jacob because Jacob loved God. And remember the time when Jacob wrestled with the angel and when he saw the staircase leading up to heaven and he said, this is an awful place. It is the gates of heaven. And the angel wrestled with Jacob and Jacob held on to the angel and wrestled with the angel all night and would not let him go. And this, you know, that's what God wants us to have, that determination determination to hold on to him regardless of whatever comes whatever comes God wants us to show him that we we mean to go all the way despite everything else we mean to fight all the way and the Bible says only those who endure to the end shall be saved but we see Jacob wrestled with the angel and the angel said, let me go. The day break it. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And if we think about the scripture and Jacob and wrestling with the angel. And we think about many, uh, when many examples we see that people has held on to God. And held on to his word and was determined not to let go no matter what the circumstances. And that is love. That is determination. That is confidence. 
He has chosen our inheritance for us. He has cho he shall choose our inheritance. Our inheritance is a godly inheritance. It's a blessed inheritance. It's something that money cannot buy. All the treasures of this earth cannot buy the inheritance that God has promised us. In verse 5 of Psalm 47, it says, God has gone up with a shout and the voice and the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. God has gone up with a shout and the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Sing unto the sing praises unto God and sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God is the King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him with understanding. God is the King over all the earth. From the north to the south. To the east and to the west, all nation come under the authority of our God. All nations. God is the king over all the earth. Sing praises unto him with understanding, knowing that he's awesomely powerful. And his beauty, his beauty is shone all over. The Lord God reigneth over the heathen. He sitteth upon his throne of his holiness. The Lord reigneth, brethren. He reigneth, he reigneth over all. And no matter what we see happening now with the rumors of war and the threat of nuclear war that we hear every day, God is in control. Fear not. John and the Isle of Patmos saw the end of this world and saw what was to come. And he saw the heavens open and he see a new heaven and a new earth as descended, ascend, descended out of heaven. So we have a hope that God has promised us a new heaven and a new earth. Where dwelleth righteousness? Where dwelleth his beauty? The beauty of his holiness. And in Psalm, Psalm 19, Psalm 90 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show it his handiwork. Have we ever looked at the heavens, at the rising of the sun, and the setting of the sun, and the awesome beauty when the sun goes down, and how immense even this earth is never mind the universe the heavens declare it is the clearing when we look and we see the beauty of the heavens it is declaring the glory it is declaring the power of our God and we are so blessed that we can have a close communication and a relationship with this awesome God this powerful God who ruleth over all the earth. Think of the birds in the heavens. Think of the fish in the sea and the numerous, innumerable amount of them of different type, different breed. How great and how many, how vast and the great ocean. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show it his handiwork. Day unto day utter its speech and night unto night show it knowledge. So day unto day there's a speech and night unto night there is knowledge, show it knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. This is awesome. It doesn't matter what language we speak on this earth. It doesn't matter how say so many languages. We can't count them. But every language God knows, God understands. God, there is no speech nor language 
where their voice is not heard. Any language that anyone speaks, God understands. And their voice is heard. Every voice is heard. This is how awesome our God is. This is how great our God is. And it is such a blessing. Their lines has gone out through all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. In them as he set a tabernacle for us, tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom cometh out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. Is going forth from the ends of the heavens and is circuit to the ends of it. There is no nothing hid from the heat thereof. Nothing on this earth is hid hidden from God. Nothing can be hidden from God. God knows everything. He's omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. Our God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and present everywhere. Hallelujah. It is awesome. And you know how we get the, to, to see and understand and comprehend the beauty of God? It's when we give Him the thanks and give Him the praise and worship Him in the beauty of holiness. That is when we start to have a glimpse of the beauty of our God. He went on to say in verse 7, The law of the Lord is perfect. How, is, how, how great is that? The law of the Lord is perfect. It is without fault. It is faultless. And the law of the Lord converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure. Hallelujah. Enlightening the eyes. What a wonder. What a great God. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart. The statutes of the Lord give joy. You know, when we think about so many people, you know, sometimes I, I see people all the time who say they are depressed and they're on, they're taking depression pill, all sort of um, uh, treatment for depression in my line of work. And I said, my God, if they only knew God, you cannot be depressed. When you are blessed, you cannot be stressed. And we get the blessing when we give God the glory. We get the blessing when we give God the praise. We get the blessing when we lift up this holy name. When we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoice in the heart. The word of God is made to give us joy. Not sorrow, not pain, not stress. Rejoice in the heart. The statutes of the Lord. The commandments of the Lord are, is pure, spotless, blameless, pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The fear of the Lord is clean and it endures forever. It is righteous, it is clean, it is peace, it is joy. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. When we think about the good God who made heaven and earth, the good God who created all things, we should rejoice and know that he's a good God, he's a loving God, he's a righteous God. He's a just God. You know, sometimes if we think about judgment in this world and how judgment is seen in this world, and if we think even about people who are incarcerated because many are also incarcerated for crime they did not commit, but they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they got caught and they were subject to be 
found guilty because they were at the wrong place, they may not have committed a crime. And many people are incarcerated because they haven't committed a crime, but they were caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. But the Bible says the judgment of the Lord is true and righteous. Nothing happens like that when God is judging. God's judgment is true and righteous. It says, more to be desired. Hallelujah. The judgment of God, the righteousness of God, the beauty of God. Here it says in Psalm 19 verse 10, it says, more to be desired than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. The judgment of God is more to be, is greater, is more powerful, is more awesome, is more beautiful than gold, than much fine gold. And it's also say it is also than the honey and the honeycomb. It is also sweeter. When we think about honey and honeycomb, I mean, honey is maybe the sweetest thing we can taste. One of the sweetest things we can taste. But the judgment of God, the beauty of God, is far sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. It is much more precious than the gold, even much fine gold. That is the beauty of the Lord. Sometimes, Sometimes we just need to use our spiritual eyes and comprehend the beauty of the Lord, the glory of God, the, the, the majesty, the power of our God, and be grateful and to be thankful. And verse nine, first Psalm 19 verse 11 goes on to say, Moreover, by them are thy servant, servant warned, and in keeping of them is a great reward. Keeping of the law and the word of God. Keeping of them. It says there's great reward. More than we can imagine. When we keep the, the word of God. David said, thy word will I keep in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word of God. Nothing is greater than the word of God. In keeping of them, keeping the word of God, there is a great reward. Who can understand this error? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. And he went on to keep thy servant from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be upright and I shall be innocent of the great transgressions. It went on to say, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, hallelujah, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let your words, let the words of my mouth the words that proceeded out of my mouth, let the words that come out of my mouth and the meditation, the thought, the thing that I'm thinking about, the things that is that I'm in my heart, the thoughts that are in my heart, let the word that proceed out of my mouth and the thoughts that is in my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are talking about the beauty of the Lord. In Psalm 90, Psalm 90, verse 16 to 17, Psalm 90 says, Let thy work appear unto thy servant and thy glory unto thy children. Let the beauty of the Lord be upon us. Isn't that wonderful? Let the beauty of the Lord be upon us. Let the glory of the Lord shine upon us and establish all the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hand establish our it. Let the beauty of the Lord be upon us. This is what we would like. This is what we want. This is what we live for. This is what we should you be, be, you know, ask God 
And when we give him the praise, when we give him the glory, and when we serve him in spirit and in truth and worship him in the beauty of holiness, the beauty of the Lord will be upon us. When we have the beauty of the Lord upon us, we are protected. The angel of the Lord encamp it around them that fear the Lord. The angel of the Lord will encamp it around us. How wonderful it is that, you know, when we serve the Lord and we know that we are protected from all danger, seen and unseen, because the Lord, the beauty of the Lord will be upon us and His glory will, sh will shine upon us. And finally, in Psalm 107 and verse 30 to 31, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. How great it would be that men praise God for his goodness. There's so many blessings that God has given to us. The Bible says He caused the sun, the rain to shine, to, the sun to shine upon the just and the unjust. He caused the rain to fall upon the just and on the unjust. All men should praise the Lord. Psalmist said, "All that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to to the children of men. How oh, great!" How great if men would praise the Lord. And that's why this world is, is the way it is today with so much trouble, so much war, so much everything is upside down because men would not praise the Lord for His goodness. Men would not be grateful for the power and the grace and the mercy and the love that God has upon us. And we would not reciprocate that, reciprocate that love. Let them exalt Him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elder. Brethren, let us praise the Lord continually. Let us give him the glory and the praise and the honor that is due to his name. He is worthy of our praises. He is worthy of all more than the praise that we can give unto him. Songwriter says, if I had 10,000 tongues, I could not praise him enough. He is worthy to be praised. The Lord bless you, my brethren. Before I close, I'm going to ask Pastor Winston if he's there to give us a short word of encouragement to close us out.